It's been a few years since our video on how to set up Conda on your system. And in that video, we did it on a Mac. This week, we're going to revisit as the installers look quite a bit different now, and we're going to do it on a Windows machine, and we'll go ahead and make an environment from scratch. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week we're going to revisit something from several years ago, which is installing and getting up and running with Conda. We all get a new laptop from time to time, and really we kind of forget how to set up our environment or how to install software that we haven't done in a while. So this week I'm going to show you how to install Conda, and we're going to do some things like set channels and priorities in Conda, and make an environment. We're going to do it on a Windows machine since last time we did it on a Mac. So let's get started. Anaconda.com is of course where you would go to find out more about Conda or they've got links that you can go through to get to the download we're going to use. Those are a little easier to just type the URL in directly. But they are the company that puts all of this together. I generally go straight to the Miniconda download page, which you can either find by Googling Miniconda download or going to docs.conda.io slash en slash latest slash miniconda.html. The main difference between Miniconda and Anaconda is Anaconda comes with over a hundred packages that are guaranteed to work well together. They may not be the newest version of all those packages, but they've been tested and that they work and it's something that they provide to their uh, customers as a whole solution. We though may want the more recent versions of something or we may not want all of those packages that are in there. It does take up a lot of disk space and that's precious. And a lot of the laptops now have 128 or 256 gig SSDs. So we're going to use Miniconda, which just has the bare basics. And then we'll put in what we want. So it's sort of adding things as we need them instead of getting everything in the kitchen sink. All right, so we're going to select the appropriate installer for our operating system. For Mac and Linux, you can either use the Bash installer, which really hasn't changed much since our first video, or now you can use the Package installer which would be a graphical installer, much like what we're going to do on Windows. You're of course going to want to download the Python 3 version as Python 2 is now no longer supported and legacy only. Make sure you download the appropriate version for your system. I'm on a 64-bit Windows machine. So we'll download that. And you'll notice it's a relatively small installer. Again, we're not putting a ton of things on. We'll go ahead and fire up that executable. Make sure, of course, that you read through the end user license agreement and that you agree with it. Now here you select if you want it for all users on the system or just you. I concur with the installer. I would just install it for you. Let other users install it in their accounts if they want, but Really, you probably don't have permissions to do that, especially if this is a university-owned machine. The default location is generally fine. On a couple of systems that were managed by IT departments, I've had to change this to make sure it goes somewhere that you have permission to write and that will move along with you. Though you do have to be careful, as moving all of these many gigs of files eventually can take quite a while if you're logging onto a system that doesn't already have that cached and make your login process over the network somewhat lengthy. So always consult your system IT folks if you've got any questions here. For the advanced options, I generally do not add it to the path variable. This is of course different than on Mac or Linux where we want to put this on our path variable. For Windows, I generally don't, especially if you're using other software, uh, things like QGIS uh, that depend on system Python or their own specific versions of Python. 
Uh, registering it as the default Python 3.8 though works pretty well, especially if you're using things like PyCharm, it will just work seamlessly with that. Or VS Code, one of my favorites. So we go ahead and click install and let the installer run. Once the installer completes, it's going to give you the option to show some tutorials. I generally uncheck these as we don't need to see them. You can always find them later and click finish. So now you have a fresh Anaconda installation. On a Mac or a Linux box, you open your terminal and if everything works correctly, you'll see a slightly different prompt and you'll be all set to go. On Windows, we're going to use the Anaconda prompt. Now you can of course integrate this with PowerShell or however else you like to work, but I've found that dealing directly with the Anaconda prompt works best. So I'm going to go to my start menu and find Anaconda prompt. And there it is. We see that we're in the base environment and in my home directory. If I run the conda env list command, we see that I've only got the base environment as this is a fresh install. Now, generally, I recommend installing from the Conda Forge channel. There's a lot more available there than from the default channel, and generally more up-to-date, though, as I mentioned earlier, not necessarily all guaranteed to play well together. MetPy itself is in the Conda Forge channel. Now, you could, of course, do things like Conda install and then specify a channel, Conda Forge, MetPy. But it's a lot easier if we just want that default behavior to be go look in Conda Forge first to make Conda do that for us. So I'm going to run the command Conda config, which lets us modify our config file. Of course, you could do that with your favorite text editor, but this command line utility I find a little safer. Add channels Conda Forge. Now, Conda config, we need to say that we're not just adding this channel, we really want you to follow the order that we've added things in. So I'm going to set the channel priority to be strict. We can use conda config dash dash show to look at everything that's in your config if you want to make sure that those changes actually took. Now we're going to create an environment. So I'm going to use CLS or clear on Mac and Linux to clear that terminal prompt. Now we're going to run the command conda create dash in and then the name of our environment. So I'm going to call mine daily. This will be my daily driver that I just tool around in and do all of my preliminary data analysis. It says, is this where you want to create it? Yes. Now we could specify a big list of things to install there. What I like to do though is create the environment so that location is established on disk. I can activate it and then I can go ahead and install things. That way if there's any kind of problem, uh, permissions or whatever on my disk, I know about it before I've downloaded and cached a bunch of packages. So conda activate daily. I'm going to clear that screen again so we're back at the top. Now I'm just going to run conda install. I don't have to specify conda forge. We're going to install Python. Now if we wanted to specify something like greater than or equal to 3.7, we could do that. But if we don't specify, it's just going to be the most recent version available in conda forge. NumPy, matplotlib, Cartapy, Jupyter, MetPy, Siphon, Pandas, Pip, XArray, IPy Widgets, FFmpeg, Bodo3, Bodo Core, Jupyter Lab, and 
Python AWIPS. This is the standard set of things that I use when I'm creating MetPy Monday videos. So now we will let it solve that environment and we'll come back when it's done. Okay, so you may have noticed I had a misspelling there and it came back and said I couldn't find Jupyter La, so I had to add the B for Jupyter Lab. Then it gives you a list of packages. Notice that this is a lot more than what we typed in. It's because it's pulling in all of the dependencies that those packages are going to require. Again, this is so much nicer than when you had to manually manage all of these things and make sure all the versions were compatible in the pre-conda times. I'm gonna say go ahead and do this. So it's going to download, extract, and install these packages for me. And it's going to take just a few minutes. Okay, so now that that has completed, we have our daily environment that's ready to use run the command conda list, it's going to show me everything that's installed in that environment. I find it's generally not a bad idea to go through every now and then and purge all of your environments or sometimes even completely wipe Anaconda or Miniconda off your system and start again, just because sometimes it's easy for those environments to get stale, you forget to update them, and suddenly you find that you're running on pretty outdated code. So as always, environment maintenance is very important. I hope that you found this video useful and that you're going to check your environment setups. And if you haven't already got it set up on Windows, go ahead and get Anaconda running. We'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.